Well, welcome in chat. It's a very special day. And by special, I mean we have a lot of fun stuff today. Th this is Sonic Racing, but that's not what we're doing today. In fact, I got something mind-blowing. We're very positive here. We're a very positive stream. It's not going to be a long stream. But it would be a... It would be an interesting one. Alright, so... If you were ever on Twitch.tv... Obviously the best website ever. Then you would know... That every so often the streams start like this. Most of the time anyways. When I can remember. But... How about this thing right here I've been working very hard to get this set up a certain way and it's me you would never think it's not even a VTuber model so here we are we're going somewhere where we've never been before it's my debut as a Minecraft YouTuber I hope you guys are ready and as you can see, I am very well prepared. I've been, um... I've been doing a thing. Obviously. This is kind of lore, in a way. Oh, God. Um... You see, I was gonna do a, a couple of different things for, um... The day. But I never got around to them. So, obviously, this is what we're doing here. Am I ready for 1.17? Yes. I hope. I hope I am. This is, again, it's not going to be a long stream. But let me show you, chat, this wonderful Minecraft world that we're in. Our SMP server. So, here's my um, Black Mesa... Thing. I'm not done digging it out yet. But it is there. Um, it's a it's very much a work in progress, as you can tell. Oh man, marked one's here. And also thank you for uh, Negative Enigma. For Rose and Cruz, a bunch of other people. By the way, I think now's a good time I can actually tell the people about the thing. This is my... Um, very small starter ikea store the ikea store is um oh no it's almost nighttime it's kind of like a a weird ikea but also like hotel thing down here at the bottom i'm a very self-made proprietor of goods now we gotta wait for nighttime to come here while it happens I only watch because it's you. That's fair. I actually don't stream that much um, Minecraft to begin with. I should probably stream more of it. But I also got to work on videos. And if I'm not working on videos, then I'm usually streaming. And then thinking about streaming. You live in the Ikea. I live in this specific Ikea. <laughs> oh man, there's a creeper outside already? But um, all these things... I'm inventor or inventory adjusting the thing. This is it. So, obviously, once we get enough, then that'll be a thing. It's not Ikea because Ikea is blue, not gray. Well, that's why this is the new world Ikea. Until we get blue stuff. Oh, yeah, you guys can't see it, but don't worry. There's a um, There's a fishing rod right here. That has all the good shit on it. Multiplayer server win. I did have one. Um, I didn't feel like paying for it. Because I obviously don't make that much money. Not from Twitch or YouTube. But maybe one day. I'll make another one. And then we can have our giant massive like. SMP thing happening. Everybody can be citizens in it. There's no way. Well. 
I was gonna say, there's no way you've heard this in a porno, but... There's a lot of songs that get around, so I can't really say for sure. Um, I do have a bee farm, kind of. Uh, this is my other... This is like the first house I made. I'm gonna take you guys on the grand tour. But this was like my first place of business establishment. This is the library where um, you go to enchant all of your items. And we have some books. We're very much ahead. And then, once you um, head over this beaten path that I forgot to make a beaten path, then you can um, get to the other people's stuff. Oh, that's right. There's, there's lava there for some reason. What in the world am I doing? See, guys. There's a lot of stuff here. This is my nether portal that I made. Which was already kind of here to begin with. This is someone else's, like... Weird... Thing. I think what I might do next is if I get another conduit, I'll put one down here. Because I have, like, three of them everywhere. Make a mob farm. There is one. Um, I haven't been to it, but I know that there is one. And it's... Why is there a... That's weird. Um, oh yeah. Build a giant wang. No, I can't... I mean, technically I can. But why would I build a giant wang when we have this thing that's loading in? You see that thing up there? I'll show you. I don't want to spoil the surprise. This is the uh, the main village that we started out in. That's the the Gurch, the gay church. I don't know why it was like that when I got here, but as you can see, the painted glass is all the colors of the rainbow. Um, I don't know what that's up there for. I think actually. I think the, the spawner thing, the, the farm, is down here somewhere. Um, dogs. Those were um, acquired on our journey before. Alright, I'm going to show you guys the cool stuff. Wait, are you gay? Are you a gay? I plead the fifth. There's this giant... Um, Crafting table, house, dome thing. Uh, and then this thing. Look it. Why would I try to build a giant wang when I got... Waifu right here. Clearly. She has... The drip. Alright. I've actually never been up this way. But let's hope that we don't die. Give them what they want. Why do people want the wang on the waifu? Yikes. I don't like these things. They are they're very weird to me. See, when you get closer, it doesn't have that same effect. But look, this is our um starting home, our spawn, if you will. Um, I don't oh yeah, that's the 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 tavern, the bar? The, the whatever it is. There's more stuff over here. Jeez. Oh, yeah, that's the Coliseum. I forgot. We, we made one of those. Um, and then Vinny Vine Sauce Guy is far back there. And then, um, you know, some small, small smaller stuff here. And I can't jump off of here, otherwise I will die. Yikes. Better not do that before I regret it. <laughs> um... Oh, man. What a great game. Known as Minecraft, am I right? Um, there's actually another building. I think it's out this way somewhere. Bamboo Forest. Proof this is a weed forest. No, that... Okay. I had to search far and wide to get bamboo, okay? I had to go to the actual jungle to get that and the jungle saplings. Um, and it is over this way. I don't know what this is. This looks cool. I don't come over here very often. Oh, I'm guessing he's stuck in the ground. Well, sucks to suck, I guess. 
Hello, Jose. By the way, if you're not a member, you can become a member for only $2. I can't say Pog here because this isn't Twitch, but I think you know what I mean. Wait, what the hell? What is that? <laughs> what is this? Is this just one? Oh my god. Who made this? Why is this here? You guys see this? I know you see it, but I have to have some disbelief here. Not a $24, but that's the high tier one. But anybody can become a member and you get emotes. Sorry. Yeah, you get emotes. Also, you get um access to what is it? Member only streams. So I had to think about the word for it. I'm pretty sure it's not here. Or maybe it is. There's a giant castle somewhere around here. But I am now officially a YouTube uh, Minecraft streamer guy. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, here it is. There. Oops. As I try not to die. Yeah, that, that's the entire castle thing right there. Wait, you can pay a thousand bucks and Necro will send you a pic of him doing a Felix cosplay. What's a Felix? Uh, oh, you mean like, wait, Felix like from ReZero? Sorry, I don't watch weeb cartoons. See, I'm a Minecraft streamer. I don't watch weeb cartoons. Uh, you know what? Member only ASMR. Maybe. I can't say for sure, because I haven't done it yet, but maybe you can get um, a member-only ASMR stream. Why is everyone making fun of me? I'm not a gamer. I'm not a gamer. I'm just a Minecraft. I'm like Dream, but less weird. You don't read Japanese coloring books? No. Sometimes I color them in myself. Um, I don't really read them. I thought Necro was black. I, I mean... Listen, I'm black in spirit. Kind of. I mean, if you need me to be black, I can. I can be. I really am digging the Sonic R music, even though I listen to it every day. I'm kind of really glad that it's playing. But now I'm going to go back to my, um, whatever I have. My home that I have established for the people. Um, we can actually do a couple of things today. Besides Minecraft, obviously. And I think you guys really enjoy it. I also thought it was an anime girl, and look what happened. Listen, nothing's changed except the content. Maybe. One day we'll actually get good Necro content. Which is in the form of the Crunchyroll video. Which if you remember, hint hint, you can see the making of it for behind the scenes extras. And also, you get to see it early. That's my sales pitch. <laughs> Listen, if DSP can ask for money and he can get away with it, then a shill here and there can't really harm the people. Build a fanboy factory? Maybe. A fanboy factory? You know what? I'll, I'll raise you this. This is what I will say to that. If you want a Femboy Factory, if Dimitri wants to start up a Minecraft server, then I will do it. Currently, well, listen, if I were a hipster, I'd have to wear the beanie. By the way, I don't have a green screen. DSP is canon in the Necro 13 Expanded Universe. True, he is. Um... What are you talking about, the fanboy? How dare you? Okay. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys some story time as we um 
do something. Oh yeah, we have some videos to watch. I think I might have pulled them up. There was a video I saw yesterday. And I should probably do a whole separate stream about it. And I might. But. I, I want you to know that I can't make a video about it. And you're like, why? Why can't you make a video about this? I'll tell you. It's very simple. The video is about Dragon Maid. And not like in the, the one that we just did about localization. It's... It's about... Um, it's about how the, the characters are coded. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. I'm going to fill you in in like two seconds. So watch this chat. Look, I even have my own little BRB screen. And you can visit the Necro Archiver. You can't use the VODs thing. It doesn't work. Not in here. I don't have it set up that way. <laughs> I don't have it set up in the way that you think that I can. For some reason, you have to go through like Streamlabs OBS for that. And uh, that just don't work. Look, you can spam it all day. It's not going to change. Alright. So, listen. Chica Dancing is a timeless classic. But also, just because. Oh, man. I don't have, like, a cool, like, little alert thing. But thank you, Hentai Muffin, for the premium tier 1 membership. By the way, we're just bleeding subs on this channel. So, at this point... If, if the more I fade into obscurity, the better. If I'm being honest. I would like to at least drop a, a couple more subs. It gives validation to people. Alright, the thing I was actually looking for... Is in the history? Okay. So, the video I watched last night... Is really bad. And when I say, like, really bad, I mean, I couldn't sit through it. And it's not a lot of things that I can debunk in them, because I also just kind of didn't fucking care. But people are eating it up. Alright, so here, let me let me start the video over. Also, the Hey, I'm Turtle for the $49.99 super chat. No, you could have put a message in there. Oh, man, and Prefa for the Tier 1 Premium membership youtube members i actually want to do a lot more streams but i don't want to be like one of those channels that becomes irrelevant like mine and then they dip down in subs and they're like you know what stream you know i wish this video were an april fool's joke but i can assure you it is 120 percent real so here's the video it is um, how coded character design works. Dragon Maid blew up on Twitter. And everyone has a hot take. I don't have my emote thing going on. And I don't have the soundboard. But hang on, Turtle, for another $49.99 super chat that says, My bad, I didn't know. Also, muffler guys out there. <laughs> All right, you're not gonna like what you hear in this video, and I will, I will be the first to tell you that it 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 actually made me um. As I was in bed last night, like a regular human, I saw this video. It was sent to me. I I I almost if I were dead, I would have been rolling over in my grave. So here's the video. Here's the start of it. She does, she does a good job, but. Holy shit. It's bad. Content warning mentions and discussions of sexualization of children, pedophilia, and child pornography. By the way, this is about Dragon Maid. This is about an anime that is about... You know what? I'll just let you see it. I don't want to. I don't want to poison the well. I want you guys to take it all in. If any of these topics are upsetting to you, you may just want to sit this one out. 
this video was very upsetting, and I wish I didn't see it. I wanted to like Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Well, I'm sorry you didn't. It's a wholesome romance between a monster and human, and an openly queer romance at that, which ends up exploring the nature of found families, which, as I discussed in my last video, is one of my favorite types of story in media. For context, I have seen the first season of Kobayashi's Dragon Maid a couple of years ago. This was back when I still naively listened to AnnieTuber recommendations, and I- That was her first problem. Listening to AnnieTubers about... That? I wanted to see a cute, lighthearted gay romance between a dragon maid and her tired, cynical crush. I was delighted when Toru made a point to state that her attraction to Kobayashi is romantic and sexual, completely destroying any possibility of queer baiting. By the way, I should also kind of preface you with this. You remember on um, the best website, Twitter.com, obviously. Um, you know the people that that when when they talk about fixing someone's art or when they they tell you that um what was the tweet that just came out yesterday there was a tweet yesterday and it was like um we need to make more anime with main characters that are 18 plus i guess we just kind of forgot that cowboy bebop exists right or outlaw star underscore but essentially, the thing I'm getting at is that those people, that's them in this video. This is her. She's one of them. But the more I watched and the more the story strayed from Toru and Kobayashi, the increasingly less delighted I became. Until finally episode six happened and one of the children pins down another child and I had to ask myself, how did I get here? How did I get here? Well, by not researching on your own. Oh, yeah, Trigun is about... Yeah, he is. I guess he is 18 plus. Well, he's also an alien, technically. But, again, that's going to be a very important part in this video. Is we're going to bring up the age of... A dragon. And don't worry, you'll, you'll know when you hit the bad part. I don't have to tell you when it is. You'll know when you get there. Dragon Maid recently came under fire when the new season was announced and this character dropped and everybody lost their minds. There were a ton of different gut reactions from <sighs> her design is terrible to Ilulu did nothing wrong and I stand Ilulu and I like all these fan arts though. Are we going to shout them out? Her character is great to her design is pedophilic. There <laughs> Don't worry, that's pretty much the point of this video. I'm not going to say anything, but that, that's the point of the video. Were people trying to redesign her and fix her? With everyone on Twitter being vocally opinionated about what is a very sensitive issue, it made me realize that maybe they didn't know what they were talking about or... Okay. You're going to get context as to why this person thinks this. And it'll be here in this next part. Or what coding even means. And, and also... I like this tweet. It's always been a litmus test for me that if SJWs hate an anime, then chances are it's probably good. Now, first of all, my man's is using hashtags on Twitter.com. That's pretty cringe. But also, he's using SJW. Do you know when... I think I talked about this like a little bit in the last video. But in the, the last video, when people say woke language or SJWs, that's kind of cringe to use because it's never it's it's a weird blanket statement that I've gotten myself out of saying because it's after taking a step back and realizing that it's literally like three people on Twitter. There's no reason to call them SJWs. It's uh, I can't say them, but it's usually just like three wheelchair symbols and how it applies to character design. For context, I am an artist. Hey, this is her art, by the way, and I hope that you enjoy the fact that I. I'm not using, wait, this is kind of meta in a way. The one time I'm not doing a video about a, a live person, they're using the avatar, but then I'm doing the real person thing. Hi, hello, I'm Neuralities. <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk. I Welcome to my TED Talk. Really hope this isn't your first video you're seeing of mine. Because and unfortunately, it is. Because I usually try to stay in my lane and avoid meaningless discourse. 
But I went to a fine art school where I learned and studied anatomy, and I have a degree in illustration. By the way, she's going to tell you, because of this background of art, that she knows everything about these characters and how they're made. Let that sink in. So when it comes to art and character design, believe me when I say I know what I'm talking about. Usually people that say that don't know what they're talking about. I may end up over explaining myself, but I'm just going to try to break this down as thoroughly as I can from an art perspective. So really, this is less of a hot take and more of an explanation behind what is a long running problem. Spoiler alert, it's a hot take. What is coding? This is going to piss you off. This part actually kind of pissed me off. Coding is a term used in media to refer to when an author wants to convey an aspect of a character to the audience, but does not want to or maybe isn't allowed to explicitly state what that aspect is. Now, the reason I didn't want to cover this video, or at least make a video covering this video, is because this would require a lot of research to debunk. And she is very correct in a certain aspect of this about coded characters. But let me also tell you that just just a week or so ago there was um there was an artist, a Japanese artist that made a um a fan art of Sonic the Hedgehog and Tails and Knuckles. And if you saw Knuckles trending, you know where this is going. So someone fixed this Japanese artist Knuckles by tracing over it, they resiled him a little bit, and they made him black. Now, I don't know about you, but Knuckles is an echidna. He's a he's an animal, and um, apparently he is black coded, according to the people. So again. The people that you see on Twitter, this is the video manifested. And I'm not trying to like really shit on this lady either. Because she's probably actually really nice. But holy shit. And sometimes the character may not even literally be the thing that they are being coded as. For instance, Renaissance era Disney villains were often designed and behaved in a way that read to the audience as queer coded. <laughs> Alright, we reached the first part. Now, I figured on YouTube streams, I don't feel like we're very interactive. So I'll leave it up to you, chat. What do you think queer coded means? Now, she does make a valid point for one character. But let's take a look. Scar is a feminine and willowy. Jafar wears eyeliner. Ursula was literally based off of a drag queen. At the time, the character designers were using this coding to illustrate that there was something inherently deviant about these characters because of the way they contrasted to the designs of the cis, het, young, and beautiful ideal of the protagonists. <laughs> well, this isn't the worst part of the video. I promise you, chat. This isn't the worst part. But just, just drink it in for a little bit. But this decision sort of backfired and ended up making queer audiences really sympathetic and into the villains who are overall fun and a bit campy as opposed to the hyper-masculine and feminine leads. Um, just, let's just keep going. And this is the thing that you have to understand about coding. All coding is not inherently bad. Then why did she frame it like that, though? She framed it as Disney's making evil characters gay. By the way, she kind of does expand on that a little bit more. 
It really depends on why the author is choosing to code a character and what that coding is meant to convey. By the way, I don't like that we use Steven Universe as an example. I'm not going to put my two cents in, but I think you know where this is going. When a corporation like Disney consistently codes characters as a marginalized group, like... By the way, I know you can't see him because he's behind me, but... Do they know that people of color or the LGBT community, in order to specifically convey <sighs> to the audience that they are evil, that is obviously not a good thing, which is why context and framing is so important. Was Darth Maul a feminine man? Sure, you can say, well, that was Lucas Films. That wasn't Disney. All right, well, what about Snoke? Was Snoke gay? Thinking emoji? What is child coding? Boy, by the way, this is where the video starts to go downhill. We're not at the worst part yet. But this is a... Like queer coding, <laughs> child coding isn't inherently problematic. It just depends on how it's used. Like, Baby Yoda is child coded. All right. This robot is child coded. Koroks and Kodama are also child coded. Child coding just means that a character has design elements that make them read to the audience as childlike, even when they may not be children in a technical sense. Some of these design elements include being small, having big eyes, being naive, or possibly nonverbal. Um, don't worry. There's going to be a weird stretch here. So, um, there's going to be a weird stretch of logic here. When, when we get to it, you'll, you'll know. Um, where this character from another show is child-coded but isn't a child because of the way that they talk versus this show, how the character talks. And then they start doing this weird head thing. You'll see it. And when it comes to discussing child coding and how people throw the term around, we end up running into some problems with exactly what it does and does not apply to because short women also exist. That is true. Does she know what Japanese women look like? Take, for instance, La Brava. And I know a lot of you have seen. This is kind of where the anime element comes in, besides the, besides the Dragon Maid thing. But this character is going to be the downfall of all of her arguments. Take a look. A small-time villain from My Hero Academia who is a short adult woman. Her design has elements that can potentially read as child-coded. She's short, her head is big, and her eyes are placed lower down on her face. And I think the creators may have been aware of that possibility and made a few deliberate design choices to mitigate that reading. Like, La Brava is short, but she's curvy. And not just her chest, her waist-to-hips ratio is that of an adult. Okay, I want you to remember that part about how she's curvy. And then remember this part where she brings up she fits in with Hero Academia's style of cartoony, exaggerated silhouettes. That's going to be important because, like all good videos, including mine, there is a bad part, and we're almost to it. Her voice actor is an adult who... Her voice actor is an adult. Does, he, does she know that almost every voice actor is an adult? In the rare cases that you get something like Sweetness and Lightning, where it's an actual child uses her normal speaking voice. Ugh, this is so frustrating! Whatever do you mean, dear girl? The JSTOR video should be racking up views, but it's barely being watched! People on the internet have no taste! By the way, this is a her normal speaking voice. And also, she's gonna bring up the Japanese voice. Wait for the stretch. 
Her Japanese voice actor is a bit higher pitched, but only in the way that Japanese women tend to speak in a higher register. What about the English one? That's not how she really sounds in English. Like, her voice actress. But of course, we gotta make it look like this is only a Japanese problem. And not because she's deliberately trying to sound younger. La Brava is romantically involved with Gentle, but again, in the text, they are both explicitly consenting adults. And but if you were to show, okay, since we want to use her logic, right? Let's do, let's do the thing. If you were to show this character, I had never seen this character in my entire life. If she hadn't told me that she was an adult, I would have thought, well, damn. Why is this child fighting in a world of heroes and villains? It seems pretty sus. But then we end up with, oh, well, she's a consenting adult. And she's saying this because of her, the way, like the way that she speaks, the way that she enunciates and talks about things. But watch the flip. And if you think that short and tall people can't be together, you may want to take a moment to check yourself. Check yourself, you fucking idiot. But even <laughs> if you read La Brava as child coded, it's not really an issue because her character isn't sexualized. This is what I mean when I say that child coding isn't inherently a problem, oh, but boy. it becomes one when the characters are not explicitly adults and are also being sexualized. Which brings me back to the impetus for this video and how this all applies to Dragon Maid. By the way, she's going to use that all that good shit that you just heard earlier. She's going to start using that to tell you about... Dragon Maid. So, in the case of Dragon Maid, like, putting Ilulu aside, like, we're not even going to get to her yet. Yet. We have to address that Kana is designed to be a child and is also sexualized. Now, usually I don't take a break in the middle of a video, but this isn't the worst part yet, chat. We're just getting started. So, if you're wondering, our wonderful Minecraft stream turned into this because I felt like everyone else had to suffer with me. And I'm not making a video on it. That sounds stupid. But. Kana is not real. Um, you don't see Kana's naked body. Um, she doesn't really engage in anything sexual. If I remember the show correctly, she doesn't really kiss another person. But, again, watch how you take this into consideration because it's her clothing. Now, right out of the gate, some people will try to argue that she's not technically a child. She's, she's not real. Because she's a dragon and they age differently and she's really like a thousand. But even by dragon standards, she is still a child. One more time. But even by dragon standards, she is still a child. Now, chat, we've had a good run. All right. I think we've had a good time together. I think we can finally move on with our lives. We no longer need to worry about anything else because fiction is the new reality. I, I can't show it on stream, but I think you know where I'm going with this. Um, if you go to like Pixiv or something or Rule 34, whatever you're image side of things you prefer there are people that um that really they really for some reason they love to make a lot of guru art i'm pretty sure that's on there 
<sighs> God damn it. Toru and Kobayashi act as her adopted paternal figures. She goes to elementary school and is in the third grade. On her trivia page, it states that her human appearance mimics that of an eight or nine year old. Does she know that people can just edit those? Also, um, it's her appearance mimics. So the key word here is mimic. Hang on. Where's my mouse? Mimics that appearance of an eight or nine year old child. Now, again, in the lore of the show, she's not, well, first of all, she's not real, but in the lore of the show, she's over a thousand years old, which means that she is younger than a lot of the other characters because of being a dragon. And then also, this other thing about her being in the third grade is also, like, they just kind of send her there because she's like, oh, well, you're a child, you have to be in school, lol. But again, that has no source either. Also, what child looks like this? What child has giant bug eyes? And everyone says, well, that's a cope. Well, again, point to me on the chart where this thing looks like an actual child. She is referred to as a child in the text multiple times. Because that's what Kobayashi sees her as. She's a dragon, but she looks young to her in the universe that they're in. Does she know who voices Kana? And she is also wearing thigh highs. I don't even know how to begin how to explain this, but... You don't. Thigh highs are a sexually charged piece of clothing in a way that stockings or knee socks just are not. Does she know that there's a fetish for almost literally anything on the face of the earth? So because socks aren't sexual to her, well, then they're just not sexual at all. Also, the leaf blower guy. Apparently, there is even a Japanese term that refers to the gap between the skirt and thigh highs that was popularized due to anime and moe subculture. But it always existed, though. If she were just wearing socks or even stockings, this wouldn't be a problem if the framing didn't also sexualize her. Is this the sexualized part? What's sexual about putting on shoes or taking them off? Oh, that's right. We're, we're not making any sense. I forgot. I'm going to very quickly show some of the clips of how the framing sexualizes Kana. And here's the timestamp to skip it if you just can't deal with that today. By the way, I can't deal with it today only because I will get copyright claimed into hell. But don't worry, you're not missing a whole lot. It's pretty much this entire last section where she shows... I, I can kind of, like, skip through it, I think. But it shows where you can kind of see, like, oh, look at how she's, like, grinding all up on this child. Look at how flustered she gets. She's licking her fingers because she's a... child. Hmm. And it kind of goes like that, and then it's like, oh, look at how much of a dumpster fire this is. Look at how sexual they are. Wow, we. And then we get to this part of the video again. That's my best description of that. I can't show it, otherwise I'll get claimed really hard. Kana is not even child coded. She, in the text, is literally a child. She's also not real. Oh, wait, that's right. But is Ilulu child coded? No. Now, let's... Let's detract away, and let's assume that she's right about Kana, right? Let's assume that she is 120% correct about Kana being a child. Okay, great. Well, Ilulu isn't child-coded, technically, according to her earlier argument. Remember the, the My Hero Academia one that people don't remember? So, because of her curves... And having big boobs. She's no longer a child. 
Checkmate, atheist. Another misunderstanding, or in air quotes, counter-argument that seemed to crop up a lot around this discussion is what childlike facial proportions mean? This is a Facebook post. I don't get all the controversy. Personally, she looks like an adult with a smaller face and some odd proportions. I wonder where she got this quote from. Mostly the small of her back and small feet, though it's not impossible. Also, if I get any lolly likers, that's a block. Well, I'm glad we're being open-minded here. And how that applies to anime, where most characters are already stylized to have larger eyes and heads. A simple way to design a character to appear as older or younger is to measure how many heads tall they are. This is going to be the stupidest thing you've heard all day. Note that most people are not going to be eight heads tall. Like, this guy here is a quarter inch short of seven feet tall. How many heads tall you are is going to vary from person to person depending on your height. For instance, I'm 5'4", and if I measure the length of my head, I'm roughly only 6.3 heads high. What does this fucking matter? It's an anime style. What is she going to do when the chibis show up? Which proportionally ends up putting me in the 10-year-old boy category, which is frankly not very surprising. If we proportionally scale up... Wait, so she admits that she is... She's an adult. But it would put her in the... 5 to 10 years range. So her argument already falls flat. And then she has to do this fucking dumb shit? Excuse me? the child to match the adult's height, you can see that the head of the child is twice the size of the adult proportionally. And if we resize their head- By the way, remember the head thing. Heads to be the same size, we can see that the child's facial features are much lower down than the adult's. So when I see people argue that Dragon Maid is just in the classic anime moe style, and everyone is chibified and cute, and that there's no difference between Kana and Toru, I can agree that it is hard to see the difference because it is stylized. So that should be the end of the video, right? Because it's stylized, that's pretty much it. Oh wait, we need to say that this is pedophilic. I forgot. But there is a difference if you are actually willing to look at and take the time to compare them. No one cares! It's a fucking cartoon! Measuring them by how many heads tall they are, we can see that Toru is just under six heads, which seems about right for the average Japanese woman. Meanwhile, Kana is only four and a half heads tall, which gives her the proportions of a two-year-old. This isn't even as bad as this video can be, just by the way. This isn't even as bad as the video can be. I don't know what to tell you. It's gonna get worse. I don't know what you were expecting at this point, frankly. Let's I was expecting a not shit video, but here we are. Let's compare her facial proportions. If I select this image of Kana and overlay her on top of Toru, and when I resize her head to account for the perspective and have the chin line up in the same place, you can see that Kana's eyes are significantly lower down. But didn't she say something about the head size for, for the child? If she were to size it up, it would be bigger. So, she kind of fucked it up already. Because she's not doing the thing that she was already comparing earlier. She was like, look at if the size of the head on the child is bigger than the six foot, the, the seven foot man. So therefore, it is a child. But we're not doing that now. We're sizing the head because it was smaller. But we're sizing it now to make the eyes match up. Which they didn't in the original example. Her face shape is round and less defined. Which is a feature that signifies that she is a child because she was designed to look like a child. What about Shoda? What about Shota right here? He's almost as tall as Kobayashi. Oh, I forgot. We need to make the child look bad. 
And if we do the same for Ilulu, we can see that she's proportionally the same as Kana. Ilulu has big tits. What are you talking about? And if we overlay her on top of Toru, we can see that her face shape is a little... By the way, this is what people are going through. The lengths that they go through. This is the blinks that they go through to say, this is problematic media. I, I don't have the time or the energy, really, to go through every single show and say, hmm, there's a little girl in that show. I think I might not want to watch it. Guys, high school DXD? Cut it out. We can't watch it anymore. And we're going on fucking Photoshop to to validate ourselves because reasons? A little bit more defined than Kana, which would make sense considering that she's supposed to be a bit older than her. But her eyes are just as low down. Who fucking cares? And the thing is, they even unbabyified her a bit from the manga. Unbabyified? By the way, Maybe I'm just um, new around these parts, but I have never heard the word unbabyify. I've never even heard of babyify. The fuck does that mean? Well, well, they adapted something from the manga and they put it into an anime. Whatever. And listen, I tried this with La Brava, and yeah, she's not even four heads tall. Great, so what's the problem here? But again, La Brava is in the text inarguably an adult character with an adult's voice and mannerisms, while Kana and Ilulu are not, and they talk like children. Oh yeah, this is where the dialect thing comes in. Because dragons, I think Kana had not been to the human world yet, if I'm not mistaken. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But Kana hadn't been to the human world nearly as much as uh, Taru had. And so Taru had always been, like, amongst the humans in a sense. Whereas Kana hadn't. And so she doesn't know a lot of, like, slang, I guess? Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm messing up the story a little bit. But I think that that's exactly the thing. And again, I could be wrong. But... Even then, this is going to be her argument. Listen to how it takes form. And before copyright claim. <laughs> And again, Ilulu is supposed to be visually 16 anyway, so I don't know what the argument is here. Which, by the way, is the legal age of consent in Japan. Y'all, she is still depicted as a minor. And in some states here in the United States of America, 16. I think it's like in... It's like in some weird states. But again, this is... This is what we're doing right now. Like, everybody understand. Oh, yeah, this is the one of the worst parts. This isn't the worst part, because the dragon one, like, she in, in, the, in the lore of her being a dragon, she's the youngest. She's still a child. This one is just as fucking stupid. And how dog years work. I don't understand how we keep coming back to the 10,000-year-old dragon well. Well, because it's fiction, and if I draw a character that is, I don't know... A rabbit or something like that. I could say, well, this rabbit is 20,000 years old and has lived amongst the, I don't know, the alien Martian people for like, you know, as long as we can remember. Then fuck the rest of this. Whatever this is. I don't need to worry about this. I just wrote a character that's 20,000 years old. I can have it die. I can have it, I don't know, find a big mommy milky GF and they can live happily ever after. It doesn't really fucking matter. It does not matter that Baby Yoda is 50 years old. It does, because he's 50. Because for his species, he is a baby. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's weird. Their lifespan is different. Did Ililu start mm. the problem? No, I think she just brought light to a problem that was already apparent in Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. There wasn't a problem. Do you know who thought it was a problem? From the beginning, Dragon Maid has always had unrealistic female body proportions. Because it's not real? But up until now, it has only ever been depicted on characters that weren't minors. So I think this was the nail in the coffin for a lot of people. Here someone even tried to fix Ililu by flattening her chest, but like this does not even fix the problem because it is these other design elements that code her as a child and she- Oh, so she's on board with the fix it, the fix it crew. I fixed it because now she's not going to be sexualized as much. Why do artists? This is, this is kind of what got me uh, in, in the short end of the stick with a lot of people. Why do, why do these artists do this thing where they fix someone's art by changing it to how they want the character to be? I'm sorry, that's not how it works, sweetie. Knuckles isn't black. He's not black-coded. By the way, if you were to go back in time and look at every single iteration of Knuckles that have a voice actor, surprise, surprise, they're all white. Now, if we were to go even further beyond that, the thing that I got shit on for was because I saw a Reimu art, a Reimu fan art, and without sounding as mean as I possibly can sound, it reminded me of Francine from Arthur in a Reimu cosplay. Now, they claimed that this was their take on it. Perfectly fine. I flew off the handle and I admitted my mistake. But we've reached a point now where any character that's like this, that has big boobs or the portions aren't correct, like, ouch, where's her organs, where's her back must be hurting, I'm sorry to tell you, they don't care because they're not real. I don't know why we have to sit up here almost every month, every season of an anime, to say, well, this is problematic media. Is still in thigh highs and her underwear. It wouldn't matter if they changed everything about this character. They could have said, oh, well, here's her aged up. Guess what? They came after those people, too. So there really is no way for you to win. If you're an artist and they keep fixing your shit, well, guess what? It's still not good enough. Coding can be used for many reasons, but historically it has been used when you want to depict something that may be socially frowned upon. I know that there's probably, out of all of the people that are here, I bet about three of you like lolly shit. And sometimes lolly shit is just... I'm gonna be real with you, it's really fucking weird. But I'm not gonna go out and try to fix the lolly art, because I don't fucking care. If there's a show with a bunch of lollies in it, I'm probably not gonna watch it. I think, um... What was that one show? It's like the one with, like, the... I don't know if she's like a babysitter or something like that, but it's like four of these like lolly characters. And then like one of them's like in the track suit, you know, the one I'm talking about, but like that show, I'm not going to watch it because I don't like lolly shit. I'll watch strike witches though, but most of them aren't even really lollies anyways. I, I don't know. Or even illegal. It's not illegal by the way. Um, this was a thing, and I, and again, I was going to research this, but then I was like, this is going to be too much fucking trouble. But the thing that people bring this up with is it's illegal because it is, uh, it's, it's with children in, in a sexual environment and it's not because one, it's not real. And two, children don't look like anime characters. I'm sorry to inform them. And you would get in trouble if it were explicitly in the text. Hey, guys, did you know that all the Dragon Maid shit that you just bought with Kana on it? Well, you guys are officially on the watch list. According to Lady here, that's against the fucking law. 
<laughs> and I do have to wonder if the dragon angle and giving Elilu such a large chest was one of the ways the author tried to sidestep the child coding accusations. No, they wanted to draw whatever they wanted to. Why is this even a... Whatever. It is the pattern of all these things in Dragon Maid that is upsetting. Even if it doesn't happen that often, it's the pattern of Rika's eyes rolling back when she touches Kana. Because children... Whatever. Shoda being consistently flustered by Lukoa. Because children are... These other characters, these main... The main grown-up characters are perfectly fine with their sexuality. They own their sexuality. Isn't that the whole purpose of, like, being comfortable in your own skin? And so children, like the other one, I forget her name, and Shoda are they're they're innocent people they don't they don't understand a lot of that stuff so it flusters showed it because he i'm pretty sure he's not been banging anyone the sunscreen section the compromising framing of kana and now ilulu's design it all starts adding up oh, Jesus. closing thoughts do I think everybody who watches Dragon Maid is automatically a child predator? The answer is no, by the way. Uh, no, I don't, and neither should you. That kind of single-minded ideology is inherently flawed. Vast blanket statements like that are just not true. And the thing is, like, I get it. I get why some people want to defend Dragon Maid, like, parts of it are legitimately good. Well, people defend it because they are able to separate reality from fiction and vice versa. Why do the younger... Sorry, I'm a boomer, so you have to let me get this out. Why is it that the younger generation have to think that everything is real? You can't ship this character because, because you can't. This character is trans. This character is a a he him lesbian. Sure, if it's your head canon, to the fucking moon. I'm with you. Go ahead. But if you're going to let your entire life be dictated by these fictional characters on a screen that you're probably going to forget about next year, why are we going through all this fucking trouble? When the focus is only on Kobayashi and Toru and their found family dynamic with Kana, there's a lot I genuinely like. And I was willing to put up with some stuff that made me uncomfortable because there still aren't a lot of canonically queer romances. By the way, if this show makes her uncomfortable, I would hate to see anything else that she watches. Does she know that on like a lot of those other queer romance shows, the people in it are kind of pieces of shit? I mean, just pointing that out. I mean, you guys saw Citrus, right? The main character, she was like, oh my god, I'm so into her, but I can't, I, like, I can't, like, just come out and say it. And then the other one's like, oh, I don't really care about you that way. And they have, like, this weird mental, uh, mentally abusive relationship for, like, the whole series. Because that's wholesome. That's the good one. Not the one that has a child dragon thing in it and definitely not ones with this level of sakuga people can watch media that is problematic critically and just because they watched it or liked some aspects of it does not inherently make them problematic in the same way because by the way we're, we're abusing the word problematic left and right you might as well just beat it and call it a day that is not how humans work and no media is perfect then why are we acting like it is? But at the same time, you can't turn around and say that the people who are upset about the design of a child being sexualized are being too sensitive because- Oh, by the way, we brought up the same cherry-picked argument, by the way, SJWs, hashtags. Because they just don't get anime. To all the people redesigning Ilulu, stop. If you don't like it, don't watch the show, read the manga, or even pay attention to it. 
It's not going to affect your life in any way. Just let people enjoy what they want. It's fictional. Grow the fuck up. Well, whoever this random Twitter user is, they're pretty fucking smart. Not gonna lie. Yeah. As an audience and as creators, we have to ask ourselves what message is a piece of work sending out into the world? It doesn't. If Listen, people shit on people for bringing up, well, you guys play Grand Theft Auto or Call of Duty and that makes people kill people. But what were they doing before that? What were these people doing on the internet before? Because I'm pretty sure, well, I can't say it because it's, a, it's an event and I definitely will get like copyright claimed. Or striked. But these people don't play games and get violent. They don't watch anime and go out and start chopping people up. More times than not, anyways. But media, if if media was the thing that pushed people forward, why are Marvel movies where's where's all the superheroes at? I definitely don't see one here. I'm not a fucking superhero, and I watch superhero shit every so often. If media, if we're sending out messages, not everything has to have one. Just a wild thought. And how are people going to respond to it? And if your story invites predators in and makes a space where they might feel validated, maybe you should assess yourself and consider making some changes. By the way, there was more sexual predators in the art community than there was in the anime community. By the way, muffler guy. So with that being said, I don't think I'm going to partake in season two of Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. This this sounds like weird, spooky, weeb trash ASMR at the very end. I I wish I could tell you that this was a fun video. It's really not. I'm There's nothing else of value here. But again, there were more artists in the art community that were found out to be lying shitheads and also child predators. Um, there were more Smash players found to be child predators than there were anime fans. I mean, if we're really trying to use this weird barometer of this, this media invites predators. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but there's more people that are predators in her community. I would like to I would like to say that that's probably not the case, but you know, we are here for a reason, I suppose. I I don't I don't get it. But that's oh, boy. Well, we had a fun April Fools' Day together as a family. You um this isn't like a face reveal technically. Because if you go to Twitch, you can probably see it a little bit more then. But if you miss the stream, don't worry. Because it is available on the Necro Archiver. Listen, one day, Spooky and I will have an ASMR. You know what? We'll do that for our next like member stream. It'll be me and Spooky. We'll do an ASMR stream. That'll be fucking weird. Ugh. But that's, that's YouTube. I'm not making a video on it because it would be a lot of research. And I think that we had a little bit of our, our, our already embedded knowledge of anime to do it. Do a Felix cosplay stream. Um, maybe. We'll, we'll think about it. If, if I get... A thousand dollars in the month of April from streams. There may be a femboy cosplay stream because I have to buy it. And also, I'm kind of a whore and I will do anything for money. Jeans isn't going to do ASMR. There's no way that's going to happen. Spooky will, though. But I have an ending screen, by the way. You won't see me on it. But it's this. Look at how fucking cool. And also, there usually is like a chat thing here, but not anymore because reasons. This was a one-time stream. We're going to go back to using the avatar at some point. And actually, I was going to do... um. 
I was going to do a thing with Claire where I made her hair uh, made her hair red again because there is a design for it, but it's not the final one. It was like in the very beginning sketch, which is what I use for Twitter now or my friend's Twitter. Excuse me. Um, I want to do more streams on YouTube, and then once these are unlisted, you'll still be able to see them if if you were already here, because it'll be in your history. But, um, it'll be on the Necro Archiver at some point. I actually got to do a lot of moving for that. So, maybe. Can you make a non-non-ASMR? I was going to do one. There was going to be a thing about it. But, um, oh wait, where's the thing at? There's like a, this an actual button. And by button, I mean menu. What the hell did I do? Have I seen the video of Soul Breed? I have not. In fact, I've been, I've been kind of like wrapped up in making the Crunchyroll video because there's a lot of, there's a lot of screenshots I gotta get. If you want to know, that's what takes the longest time is the screenshots. Like, the script and stuff is easy. The voicing it over, fairly easy. But when you get to the fucking screenshots to get all that info... It's tough. Oh wait, is it right here in this thing? Uh-oh. Listen, I'm really good at YouTube, except when I'm not. <laughs> but, uh... Thank you to uh, Hentai Muffin for the YouTube membership. Um, oh my god, why am I so bad at streaming on YouTube specifically? It doesn't even keep a record of it. Maybe I have to refresh it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I can't see it on here. I hate this new YouTube streaming layout. It sucks. Don't Don't worry about it. But, um, but thank you for the, the membership. And then also to uh, Hey I'm Turtle with the two forty nine ninety nine Super Chats. There's another member and I can't see it here. Great system, by the way, YouTube. I got a different way I can see it. <laughs> and Prefa. See, I'm smart. I think, um, what's the other thing that we can get into? The next stream that I do will obviously be with Claire Avatar. No more face streams. I think we're all kind of spoiled from that a little bit. Um, oh yeah, I did do shoutouts, technically. But a thank you to Pokemon Red, 12, Hey I'm Turtle, and Raymond Ortega for the tier 5, which is the highest one. That's why I made the lowest one, $2. Um... But yeah, we'll, we'll do another YouTube stream. I kind of, I kind of want to get those out so people can actually get use out of their uh, emotes. And then also, if I start streaming on Twitch, um, probably not today, but tomorrow or something. Listen, I'm very inconsistent. What is consistency? <laughs> but um, I did have fun. I enjoy seeing you all here, everyone that attended. This will be on the Necro Archiver, which I need to start linking in my chat for some reason. Oh my god, why am I so bad at life? Oh my god, wait! There's a Tevin stream going on? This is amazing. I can't raid him, can I? Wait, live redirect, select a channel. Oh, wait. Can I do, like... <laughs> I can't do it. Whatever. It's fine. I'm gonna probably be watching the Almighty Tevin stream. Which is, um... Somewhere else. He's actually what got me into uh, doing more live streaming stuff. Fucking kills it. But um, that's the Archiver channel, if you want to go there after everything is done and uploaded. But um, again, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thanks for all the contributions. Um, the Almighty underscore Tevin is streaming right now. 
Go back to the to the to that the... guy. He's doing an April Fool's stream as well. Here, let me copy it for you, because I didn't copy it the right way. Here you go. I will see you guys there. But thanks for hanging out for this wonderful April Fool's Day. And remember, I love each and every one of you, but not in the weird dream way where you're all kittens. You guys are regular humans. <laughs> And make sure you wash your hands and do the five, you know, the usual stuff. It's fun. It's a fun time.